The rationale for our trial, which was called CLGB 10603 or Ratify, was that we were seeking to improve the outcome for patients with AML that had a particularly bad prognosis, namely those with a FLT3 activating mutation. About 35% of all AML patients have such a mutation, and most of those people have a subtype that is a particularly bad prognosis due to a high relapse rate. We also knew we had a drug called mitostorin that was active in this subgroup based on preclinical data that suggested that, as well as some early clinical data using the drug as a single agent in relapse refractory FLT3 mutant patients, which showed some activity, but nothing so wonderful that it would be approved as a single agent. We also had preclinical and clinical data where the drug was combined with standard chemotherapy, and there was some encouraging non-controlled results. So we, on with all the preclinical and early clinical data, we thought it would be reasonable to do a large randomized prospective trial in this specific patient subtype defined by a genetic test on their blasts, on their leukemic cells, to see if we could improve the outcome with standard therapy, which is chemotherapy alone, by adding the agent. The most re important results of this randomized prospective placebo-controlled double-blind trial was that the addition of mitostorin to standard chemotherapy in induction and post-remission settings benefited patients by improving overall survival, yielding a risk reduction of about 23% for dying if you were randomized to mitostorin compared to placebo. So that was by far and away the most important result. In addition to the primary endpoint being met, that is to say overall survival improvement, we also saw a benefit in terms of event-free survival. We also saw a benefit in terms of disease-free survival, as well as, and this is important because 57% of the patients were transplanted at one point or another during the course of their treatment, even if you censor for transplants, if you take out the, that variable, there's still a benefit from mitostorin compared to placebo in all the parameters we looked at so far. Mitostorin is indeed not just a FLT3 inhibitor. It also inhibits VEGFR, PDGFR, KIT, as well as a non-tyrosine kinase enzyme called protein kinase C. So this could have had either good effects by inhibiting other enzymes that are contributing to the pathophysiology of AML, or it could have added toxicity. Well, I've already said it has not added toxicity, so maybe it would be effective in other types of AML that don't harbor the FLT3 mutation in the blast. That is to say, everybody else with AML, it might be worth testing in those patients. Also, older adults with AML who either have or don't have the FLT3 mutation, it'd also be worth testing along with chemotherapy in those patients as well. The question is whether mitostorin would be safe to add to chemotherapy in patients over age 60. I think the answer is likely yes, but that has to be shown by another prospective clinical trial in that age group. We had a good handle on the side effects because it was a randomized placebo-controlled trial, so people weren't biased or couldn't be biased when they were answering the question about side effects. In that context, there were no increased side effects of patients, serious side effects for patients randomized to mitostorin except for rash which was a bit more common in uh, patients randomized to mitostorin. There was no increased death rate in patients on the mitostorin arm either.